we've scoured the internet to bring you the ultimate in life hacks, bonkers inventions and crazy contraptions designed to make your life easier, more exciting and definitely more fun. And we've summoned a team of experts with science brains and funny bones to explain everything. From the ridiculous to the sublime. And make sure you strap in for the grand finale at our very own Hack HQ, where we create and construct an epic stunt, our very own super-sized solutions to life's problems, big and small. With the help of Mike Sansom, pyrotechnician, chemist and engineer, and his human guinea pigs, Marcus Bronzy and Stephen Grant. For now, sit back, relax and put your feet up. Let us do the hard work so you don't have to. This is how hacks work. It's time for our episode about the biggest and baddest hacks out there. So we're going to show you some of the most ridiculously elaborate and downright stupid life tips that have ever been filmed on video. What loving parent wouldn't want to drag their child along with a drone in a pram? From the trick shot of the decade, to a tree hacking hack, the likes of which you've never seen. And a mattress made for maritime adventure. And in our epic hack, Mike will be finally sending one of his guinea pigs into outer space. You can't get it much bigger and badder than that. Our first video is for that very, very niche parent who wants to walk their baby, but for some reason can't be within 10 feet of the stroller. What loving parent wouldn't want to drag their child along with a drone in a pram? Hmm, more importantly, what parent in the world wouldn't want four fast-spinning rotors mounted on 30 kilograms of metal hovering above their baby? I did not think that the drone could generate that much thrust to be able to pull that baby, or fake baby. The drone can pull this buggy even though it's significantly more weight than it can lift. There's not actually that much weight or resistance, there's just friction. And when you've got wheels, the friction's fairly low. So you can drag a pram with a drone. The question is, do you want to? This guy definitely does. This hack is a really terrifying view into the future of childcare, I think. Baby hacks are gold dust for busy parents. However, a remote-controlled drone dragging your baby across a concrete wasteland is probably something no parent should ever consider. Easily one of the baddest hacks out there. A massive miss. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, so this next vid shows a mammoth machine dedicated to its hands-free preparation. Let's face it, you'll need a break after constructing this bad boy. It's a slippery slope, isn't it? Um, you start with this, and then before you know it, you've got a, you've got a Terminator on your hands, and uh, he's cooking you breakfast. I'll be back in a minute. I'm just nipping out to get some more eggs. Different teas need different temperatures. For black tea, something around 99 or 100 degrees, the boiling point of water is often best, because some of the reactions that happen just don't occur at lower temperatures, and so the tea tastes different. The original Rube Goldmoe machines didn't need to be a sequence of events. It just has to be an overly convoluted machine to accomplish a simple task. Well, if that's the case, Chris, I think this guy has definitely nailed it with this overly complicated contraption. Strictly speaking, this is no hack, but it's most definitely a hit. For most of us, vacuum cleaning is the most thankless task in the world. But if you're one of those strange people who love to while away the hours cleaning filthy carpets, allow me to introduce you to the world's smallest hoover. This feels just like a little, um, a little bit of metal that is pushing dust around. I mean, it doesn't actually seem to be hoovering up any dust. I think kudos for making the world's smallest vacuum cleaner, but it doesn't seem like it works very well, and it doesn't seem like it's sucking anything up, but, you know. Yeah, thanks, James. I think we all noticed this dainty dust sucker uh, sucked. But did you know that your average household vacuum cleaner can possess super strength? A vacuum cleaner is essentially a pump that sucks air out of a chamber. Inside the chamber, the air pressure is very low, but outside it, the atmospheric pressure is very high. 
This means that air wants to rush through your nozzle of choice, along with the occasional sock. Completely covering your nozzle means that air can't get back in to fill the chamber, so all the air pressure from outside the vacuum starts to push against the object blocking the nozzle. And the bigger the nozzle, the more air that pushes against it. In fact, with a big enough nozzle and a powerful vacuum cleaner, you could pick up pretty much anything. A bowling ball, a person, even a bus. I've got a pretty small flat, and while I'd appreciate the storage space from this thing, imagine how many times I'd have to empty the bag. True, this vacuum cleaner does fulfil its household duties, but for anyone trying to clean their house in less than five days, it absolutely sucks. A micro-sized miss. No, don't change the channel. This is not a forest sequel to Mad Max. This completely not insane individual is actually demonstrating a niche solution to cutting down a tree using a tree house. I know, obvious, right? So here's my problem with that. He's built a full tree house, he's sliced the tree house in half, and then he's used the tree house to pivot onto the next tree to cut it down. I have a few more problems. Why is he controlling the chainsaw with a steering wheel? Why is he not holding the chainsaw? And why is he even doing this? Using a treehouse to cut down a tree seems a little bit counterintuitive. You want to make sure that you're not actually cutting your own tree down. A chainsaw is pretty much exactly as it sounds. What you've got is a chain which goes around a cog and it goes very, very fast, just like a bike chain. The thing is, the chain is actually very rough. When it moves at mad speeds, it literally blasts away anything that gets in its way. If you're thinking about cutting a tree down in your back garden, then maybe it's growing in an inconvenient place and that's fine. But in general, cutting down a tree is one of the biggest environmental problems that we've got at the moment. Using a chainsaw is definitely a job that shouldn't be hacked. This guy is out of his tree, a mad miss. Coming up at Hack HQ, Mike is going to be experimenting with rocket power as he plans a trip of a lifetime for guinea pig Marcus. What could possibly go wrong? So far, we've shown you the worst way to take your baby for a very frightening walk. A breakfast contraption which will drive you to distraction. And a way to make cleaning even more boring. We've seen some big and bad hacks so far, but don't go anywhere, because I have a suspicion the internet has a bit more to offer. Male beauty regimes can be just as weird as females, which this next hair-raising hack proves. Yes, that's right. No matter how much it overcomplicates a reasonably simple task, there are some people out there who still believe the drone way is the only way. I don't think this is going to catch on in the beautician on my high street. Wax strips are a delicate balancing act. You need to get something that's sticky enough that it attaches really firmly to your hairs, but you also don't want something that's so sticky that it's going to take your skin off with it. Yeah, skinless legs would be a very interesting look. Waxing famously painful, and he obviously is in pain when it happens. Um, and the reason that is is because each one of your hairs, every single one, is embedded in a whole different layer of cells. Now, when you pull the hairs out, you massively overstimulate all of those receptors, so they're just like pain, 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 pain. And that's why waxing is so painful. This overly elaborate hack will only serve to prolong your pain. A hairy hack, miss. Ever thought what it would be like to turn a mattress into a boat? Well, this guy actually did it. I was trying really hard to think of a good use for this hack, and my guess would be to escape from your lakeside home when it came under attack from bandits by throwing your mattress out of your bedroom window. So is that, after having carefully mounted an outboard motor onto the mattress in anticipation of said bandit attack, right then? Correct me if I'm wrong, but don't they do inflatable mattresses? I mean, surely an inflatable mattress would be far better. It would be, George, if this episode was called Biggest and Better. The reason that this mattress can float for so long is because it's made of memory foam, and foam contains lots and lots of little tiny bubbles. So density of the mattress is a lot less than the density of the water, and that's why it can sort of float around. He's used paint here to stop the mattress from absorbing water, but paint isn't the best thing to waterproof a material, so over time that water's going to seep into the mattress, start taking up all the holes, and the density increases, which means, unfortunately, his boat is doomed. This ridiculous boat hack may give you a reputation for wetting the bed. But when it comes to life on the open water, comfort is everything. A maritime hit! 
And if you fancy yourself as a bit of a pool player, this next vid will be right on cue to help big up your reputation as the ultimate hustler. Yes, you'll need multiple rooms, loads of cues, dozens of balls, and a lot of patience, but this ultimate trick shot won't fail to impress. Because pool balls are pretty much incompressible, they don't squash very well, that means the energy can be transferred very easily through the line of balls, knock the next one, and set the next part of the process in train. I don't know if I'd be more nervous setting the whole thing up or being asked to film it. I think this is actually all done with CGI, and if you look at the making of, it's a load of people in full green suits moving the balls around, and that's how it's done, surely. If you say so, George. This pristine pull shot may have been hours in the making, but with terrific trickery like this, who cares? A hit! Time to head over to Hack HQ, where unfortunately for guinea pig Marcus, Mike has been listening a bit too much to Elton John, Rocket Man in particular. Marcus. Uh, today was our biggest and baddest hack. Clues in the title, Marcus. And you're playing with a rocket. What's bigger and badder than rockets? Not much, Mike. This all looks really intriguing. Show me rockets. OK, so rockets need one thing, thrust. And Newton's third law states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. Okay. So the thrust comes out this way, sending the rocket that way. Cool, so the fuel burns, creating an action that pushes downwards, and the reaction is the rocket going up. Exactly, but rockets don't need to burn to create that thrust. Let me show you one. Right. What have we got here? This is a film canister. So we've got the film canisters, and then we've got one of these effervescent tablets. And if I give you one, there you go, and okay. I'll take one. All right. Now we need to put a small amount of water into each one of these film canisters. OK. Probably fill it about halfway. OK, cool. Here we go. Now what we've got to do is pop our tablet in, right. press the cap on, right. turn them upside down, right. and see what happens. OK. OK, ready for this? We've got to do this quick though, right? We've got to do this really quickly. Okay, cool. Yeah. So, tablet goes in, stick the cap on. <laughs> hey! <laughs> There. So the fuel there was water, but there's also many, many different fuels. So think of the shuttle that goes up into, into space. They use solid fuel rockets, and I've got a solid fuel rocket to show you here. Gunpowder, a black powder rocket. I guess it was only a matter of time before the gunpowder came out then. Hey, Mike. Just like what you see in fireworks, but I've made a clear one so you can see exactly what's going on. You've got your propellant here, which is a solid fuel, right. gunpowder, and then you've got a nozzle there, which is what's going to produce the thrust. You've got all of these hot expanding gases squeezing out through a small hole, producing thrust that's going to send it this way. I'm going to put a little bit of fuse in to ignite it. OK. And that goes in that little hole. Mm-hmm. Everyone get all that? Safety specs. Naturally, Mike. Let's light it up and see what happens. There we go. So look at that, you see it burning. Thrust is going out that way, propelling it this way. That is very smoky. Really smoky, and that's because of all the gases that are produced from that small amount of solid. And this is exactly why NASA used them as their solid fuel boosters, because of all that thrust produced by that small amount of solid. So you've got a reducing agent, which is the carbon, yep. and you've also got something else which creates oxygen. Exactly. And they mix together and burn together to create the thrust. He picks his stuff up fast, doesn't he? Exactly, until all of the fuel is gone. Awesome. Any other types of rockets? There are. There's liquid-powered rockets and gas-powered rockets. And another one, have you heard of SpaceX? Are they a band? They use hybrid rockets. I've got a little hybrid rocket to show you here. What is going on here, Mike? <laughs> OK, right, so I've got my oxygen tank here, and that's going to feed oxygen all the way through this hole. I'm going to light it at the top, and then we'll see if it burns. So, let me get this right. This here is the actual fuel. That's the actual fuel. The plastic is the fuel. Yeah. There's also a hole at this other side as well. Yeah. What does that do? So because you've got a, a hole that goes all the way through mm -hmm. and all of this plastic is going to be burning at the same time, I then need to restrict it. So it's like when you get a hose pipe and you hold the end of it, it goes further. Mm -hmm. So you do that by restricting the flow of gases out the end produces the thrust. Let's burn it. OK, right. All I need to do is stick a bit of fuse in to start the burn. So this initiates it and then the oxygen will burn the plastic to continue it burning. There we go. Oh, 
that was awesome. How are you controlling the thrust there? Literally with this regulator. The more oxygen I put in there, the harder it burns, the more stuff burns, and that produces more thrust. Not sure Mike should be in charge of how much something burns. This sounds like a recipe for disaster. Right, so which kind of rockets are we going to be using for our biggest and baddest hack, and how are we going to be using them? Right, so we're going to be using solid fuel rockets, gas-powered rockets and liquid fuel rockets, all to try and get you into space. Me into space? Yeah, you did say you wanted to go into space, right? Yeah, come on, Marcus. Surely you remember saying that, don't you? And who'd want to miss it? We'll see you later as our epic hack goes stellar. <laughs> so far, we've seen a high-altitude hair removal, a mattress boat hack that gave us that sinking feeling, and a badass ball-busting pool hall hack. Still to come, we've got Master Builder meets Master Chef, a time-saving mop bucket hack, and we'll be seeing how Mike plans to put a rocket up the backside of his epic hack. A bus is one of the biggest vehicles you can drive, so imagine just how bad it would be if your windscreen wiper broke during a monsoon. Luckily for these passengers in Mumbai, the quick-thinking crew of this coach had an answer up their sleeve. Good old-fashioned elbow grease. I love this sort of innovation, this sort of can-do attitude that you get in, in some parts of the world. Windscreen wipers work using a different kind of motor to the ones you normally find. These are called stepper motors, and they actually have discrete positions due to magnets changing position. And what they do is they snap to one position and then back to another position, depending on the way you put the current through the coils. It may not pass a safety test, but this ingenious hack wipes away the competition when it comes to sheer inventiveness. A high visibility hack, it! Filling the mop bucket can sometimes be the most awkward part of house cleaning. Well, not anymore. By deploying another piece of home cleaning kit, the dustpan, you can fill up your mop bucket with no mess every time. Unfortunately, you still have to mop up. Yeah, we didn't find a hack for that part. Sorry. It's a feud as old as time. The uh, tap versus vessel. Uh, kettle in a hotel room sink trying to get that under the under the tap, always a nightmare. Um, uh, my solution is just use a teacup and then fill like that, but I think his using that is a lot nicer, it's a lot cooler. If you say so, George, everything about this mega mop tip is big and bad, and best of all, it works. A house cleaning hack hit. <laughs> Pulling off the biggest and baddest hacks is about having all the gear, but no idea. So this next video is a perfect example of why you should never trust an omelette cooked by a builder. Slicing away like a gourmet chef, this yoker is clearly no fan of the humble egg white. But what is it that really separates them? An egg yolk is about one third the weight of the egg, but contains all of the fats, as well as a whole bunch of vitamins, minerals and proteins to help the chick develop. If you've ever wondered where the yolk of your egg sits before you crack it open, the answer is right in the middle. Attached to the top and the bottom by two bungee cords of protein called chalaza, keeping it safe when the egg is knocked about. The egg white, or albumin, which makes up the rest, is almost entirely water and high-quality protein. A layer of more runny egg white sits around the outside while a more cushiony, jelly-like layer surrounds the yolk for extra protection. It's this bit that doesn't want to let go of the yolk. I can see why this guy might want to lose his egg whites. Frankly, for me, they're the most boring part of the egg. I would have loved it if the camera afterwards had pulled back and you'd seen the runner and the camera guy and the sound guy and the director and the producer all literally with egg on their faces. There's definitely an easier alternative out there to this unusual cooking technique, but there's no denying this guy has cracked separating an egg in his own unique way. The jury's out on this one. Over to Hack HQ. The countdown is over and the fuses are lit. There's no cannon too big, no dynamite too strong for Mike to handle. And with his trusty guinea pig Marcus, He'll try anything so that you don't have to. A 
earlier, Mike once again indulged in his favourite passion, experimenting with rockets and dynamite in his bid to send guinea pig Marcus into the stratosphere. Now, after some final preparations, it's time to see which one is the biggest and baddest in our epic hack. I've got a bad feeling about this. Uh, Mike? Yeah? I thought we are doing rockets. What have barrels got to do with rockets? This is our biggest and baddest hack. And these are our rockets. But these are heavy barrels. I can't really see you getting these up in the atmosphere. Not with that attitude, Marcus. Yeah, well, I've put different things in here. So I've got some solid fuel, which is my black powder, and that's got oxygen mixed in with it. Only two grams of black powder in there, and that's our solid fuel. Right, I'm going to call that one hardcore. <laughs> nice, yeah. <laughs> OK, and then we've got our liquid fuel, two grams of petrol mixed with oxygen under that barrel. That's going to be called petrol head. Like it, like it. And then we've got our gas fuel, hydrogen, and only two grams of that mixed with oxygen. Only one name for that, Ooh. Hydra. He's good at this naming thing, isn't he? Right, which one's your money on? I like to think of myself as a little bit of a petrol head, so Miniature Marcus is going on petrol head. Let's hope he doesn't burn up on re-entry. I'm going to try the hydrogen, the gas, and I'm going to stick it right here. Only one thing for it. Press a button, see who wins. Let's get back over there. All right, let's get these up in space. Right, they're primed and ready to go. All you need to do, press that number one button. OK. Three, two, one. Blast off! <laughs> Hang on, why didn't anyone say blast off? <laughs> I think I'm one hand down. Hardcore went absolutely nowhere. <laughs> Hydra's rolling down the hill and... Um, Petrol head did all right. Did yeah. all right, yeah. did all right. But did you see how high I went? Yeah, how high did that go? <laughs> I don't know, it must have been about 15, 20 metres. 20 metres, pretty impressive. Yep. But I really want to get into space, and I've been a little bit naughty, Mike. While you were making these, I got the keys to your workshop, and I reckon I found about 5,000 times the amount of black powder that you put in that. And uh, let's have a little look over there. Uh, hang on, is he allowed to do that? What? Right, let's take this to space, Mike. You ready? Go on, then. Three. Two, one. Yeah! <laughs> Look at that. That's how you get into space. <laughs> hmm, I think space might be pushing it here, Marcus. That is definitely one of the biggest, baddest hacks, right, Mike? I'll give that one to you. That's the end of our biggest and baddest episode. Now you have all the tools you need to be top dog in the land of hacks. Just please, please, please be careful if you're trying to send a miniature version of yourself into space.